No man, we don't we can't punish the police. Oh we should punish that the police. That is what they are trying to do. Listen, no, no. Police is not Babylon. Babylon is a live. Right. You understand me, right. you get right. this in your head, you know. So when you take by a Jamaica CD and you hear me burn Babylon, me have burn Babylon and I want you to help me burn Babylon. This live that have you have to be. Granny used to tell me all the time, sparks and feats and preparation combined. The road been right here all this time, but you gotta look with more than your eyes. And the small axe Jesse Ryle representing for I just star mindset. Rich forever. Them, them, um, you come over there, hope you make certain so they can't get the talk. You yeah, tell you. You understand? And him say, me vex. And the reason that's why I tell you now. In brother and David, David did know to. From that day alone talk to Pulpy. Up to the night. Um the Good Friday night. When this boy named um, Burrow from back to kill Pulpy. And then, you understand? And then I said to Pulpy mix up with man of Spanish town. But it's a boy named Burrow. Burrow is the same boy who killed his daughter, grandfather. You understand? So, you know, when you talk about say, our man will say a police and them thing. Uh, you have a youth now, when me and him go, named David Powell. He come from Galloway Road. The man dunks man them, Kevin. He and the prison, he and supposed to soon come out now because he and the country for murder. You understand? All our, all our go together and everything. You know. And um, Vin, police had killed Vin in our uh, Whitfield town. This police killed Vin the mon the Monday. Me never know see even Vin a bad man. And me did see Vin in my yard, the Sunday, with my cousin, we had teacher. And then grew up together. And police killed Vin the Monday. You understand? And me never know if Vin a bad man, because he's quiet, brown youth, and all them things. Uptown him living up. But he loves the badness. People them have money. You understand? So, you know, you talk, so you can't understand that and them things. Oh, one youth. You don't know a gunman. You see, when you keep, all right, I tell you this now from all, all the people you know, you get all them up on you. It's when police, when, a, when police kill a gunman. You see, in the same community, I tell you about when I grew on them thing there. You see how them talk about that gunman is as if he's some soldier, he was fighting some war in some other country, and it's the enemy kill him. So they put him on a pedestal. You see, I look at youth now and listen when they talk about him, just like him like dog far. You know how much youth up at Augustown right now want to be like dog far? Because you see when Dark Power dead, the amount of people hear them say him kill. And all of them things. And that's how they are glorifying. There's nobody there to say that. You know where him do and them things they're wrong. You understand? And the thing is that with ghetto people is because of ghetto people are desensitized. And the majority of them the reason why they are desensitized, they don't read. So them can't decipher things. Ghetto people never wrong. I mean, I tell you this. Wrong is right to ghetto people, and right is double right. Ghetto people never wrong. And that's the reason why you hear now Cliff Hughes, in, uh, who's a media personality, the only one in Jamaica that is denouncing criminality. But you understand? But then we turn on him, you know, because criminals are like when you call them out, you know. Because he's saying that if you commit the crime and the police come to arrest you, why you want to fight the police? You understand? Make the police do him job. Because the police is there for law and order. And I can't go on and on and anything. So when you talk, say, you don't, you don't understand how a man, one man will see a vehicle with a police. All right. Mm. What, you say one, you just say one man, you know. I told you already about Trinity, brother, Jokey. It was Jokey alone, you know, that shoot, that shoot up the mobile reserve Land Rover. The windshield had about 13 bullet wounds or um, bullet holes in it. It's the mercy of God save the police them why none of them never get shot or dead. One man, and guess what? It's one for Joe Kevin. And him have an apostate. One man. 
So when you are saying that you don't understand how that, so I'm just giving you a scenario. One gunman and you have four police officers in a marked police vehicle him, and, and him just involved in a crime and him see the police vehicle, the police, them not even know him just commit a crime and him start shoot at the police vehicle at 13 bullet holes in the windshield. So let us give a scenario for sure. you. So boy, you can't understand. I tell you, no, you have a raster man who come from. A raster man who come from um, Tien Avenue. But them killing him. See him out them, you know, when he buy a dread, you know, a raster man, you know, a piece of raster man. And I see him out them from Tien Avenue, killing him, I tell them, say, boy, feel like the gun business and all them things. You understand? You understand? Yeah, Get up people, they are desensitized. And they have been trained how to market criminality. You understand? Ghetto people are narcissistic people. <laughs> they, are, they are pathological liars. Mm -hmm. A majority of Jamaican people. The easiest way for you to lose your friend, you know, even as a raster man, you see you tell your friend the truth. Jamaican people don't like you in the truth. Now when you, you see when you tell them the truth, they vex with you. You have to be a liar. So you have your friend, you have to lie to your friend. If your friend is a thief, and you tell him say my thief, him vex. If you're a thief, you're not supposed to glad say you're a thief. A man will sell, we sell drugs and them thing. Eh? Him glad say, yeah, him, him tell him say my drug is. But when the police hold him and them thing eh, with drugs, you know, nobody if you say my drug is. You say, boy, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if you do not want to be labeled, you know, you don't do the thing. You understand? Yeah, it's a serious thing. Yeah, serious thing. Yeah. So, so, you know, so when you say that now, you can't understand how a man have a gun and see a, a, you know, a vehicle, a police, and him alone challenge them. You don't understand, man. That man, you say, when he kill a police, him, he's put on a different pedestal than anybody else in our community. As if in time him dead, everything with the people they are talking about him in his, when he was alive, as if he can hear. So it's an ego thing. So, so him feel good about himself. What 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 the ayah say within within um within certain communities and within the cliques them within the community are are the gangs them the bad man them for them for kill a police. Mm -hmm. That is is, is 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 them street them street cred go up. Yes, man. Big, put them on a different pedestal, man. To kill police, bigger, bigger and better than them. You can't find out. You understand? And even though police kill him, um, fame brother and them thing. They say, boy, yeah, um, yeah, man, a fame, a fame brother and a lick down the police, boy. You, know? you understand? Mm. A bad man, you understand what I'm saying? So, mm. by doing that, he's on a different, he's not an ordinary criminal. If you kill a police or a soldier, that's not an easy thing to do. This is just like how the boy that killed a little young police the other day in a frag city. Mm. Remember that he's born, he, he's born and raised in the same community, you know. And but what, what most young police do not know, you know is when you're from um, these impoverished areas. And it seems like his entire Jamaican now is like that. Not because you are from the era. Once you become a police officer, you know, I remember the, uh, at, the, at the military in Jamaica. Automatically, you know, the people them see you as the enemy, you know, and them see you as an informer. And you feel dead. Mm -hmm. Because once you represent the system of law and order, you, you are not a friend of theirs. Not until a person can emphasize with another person for them to understand that criminality is wrong. If you love your mother and your sister, how you would feel for your next man rape your mother and your sister? You're not going to feel good. You understand? But yet still you want to see your next man's sister and rape her and no consequences. You're not supposed to happen like that. And if you kill somebody, it's just like this guy when he's Tadmar. And as you check, uh, as it, as you tap on that, this guy named Tadmar fought by Grandspin that killed, he killed a man, you know, over the weekend in Grandspin. That was December last year. 
and shot at another man, you know, who was doing amazing work in the community, you know, and that man was able to escape and hurt. But one, he killed one of them that was working. But when he was killed by the police, even his grandfather were blind, see? They saw, you understand? And they were defending the man, but yet still, what happened to the man that he had killed earlier and, sh- and the other man that he had shot? Mm. You are talking about say, why him have the gun and what the police should wait until him finish shooting at them taking him. Police are not trained like that, man. If a man fire at you at the police, your job is to return fire. When you return fire, you're supposed to kill him. No police not trained for shoot nobody at them foot and them and people watch too much Hollywood movies, they watch too much too many movies. Once you kill a police officer, it's an attack on the state. And there's no place for you to go but to go to the mark. That's how it is in America and everything. It's called preemptive strike. Because you're saving lives. It's just like Al Al Zawari. That the American them drop bomb and killing now. Um, Afghanistan since they're one of the, the mastermind behind 9 11. It's pretty to strike the American government using you know, it because he's a terrorist and by killing him, you're saving life. So, in time, the Jamaican police kill these um, these young men who are killing people, they are saving life, so they have to use pain to strike. It's just like the two guys that, that the police killed the other day um, from Spanish town, the one that escaped from, um, from Central. Who was wanted for two counts, two counts of murder, and the two people that is he killed was his. F- These people are people that know him, and he was friends with their son. But because they have a disagreement, so he decided to kill his his former friend parents. What kind of what kind of madness is that? And he expect and he expect now his parents don't expect that he's to go to jail. Yeah, it work like that. And when he, when the police come for him now, he's gonna put up resistance. Police have to defend themselves. Criminal must live in fear of their lives. I remember in the 1980s, and I'm on it, you understand? When I was living in concrete jungle in the 80s, late 80s, I could walk from concrete jungle from my pathway to Jonestown, Anatone, to um, to Jonestown, Craigton, Anatone, down Matthews Lane, and go down to the pier and, and swim on a Sunday. Because most youth from Kingston, uh, metropolitan area and I don't like pay most of you them learn to swim in you know? Not gun boat in you know, a you know the money if you take bus if you go to port or if you go to a gun boat to swim. You understand? So you have to go down I pay. Remember I say pay now about a minute. So you know much you join down there so to learn to swim. And then they you finish now, you know your wet clothes and you walk from the say you go back. From from the pier back to jungle. And nobody don't do anything. That's the kind of life where you want to live. There was no artificial borderline. You understand? Oh, we come by this now. You live run by this road, and I'm gonna tell you, say you can't come at this road because you know, you understand, you are, you are enemy. We all Jamaican and them things, they're not enemy are supposed to involve a man say something to a next man because his ego is bruised and you want to kill the next man. Is it literacy that? That's what you need to do. Is it, we need to change the mindset of the people. You can disagree to agree. It's not everything that I am going to say that people is going to like me. I want if people hate me, you know. Most, most of my enemies are me are police. And the reason why them don't like me is because I don't like people in police. That. Me tell a man, say, me, you know, I know them are good. I me say, boy, you know, I don't like thief in police. I hear thief. I don't like thief in police. So because of that, you no. Know, so they will say, boy, why you chat too much on them things there? And man, I say, watch your back on them things there. You understand? And that, that's how it is. You know, criminals, criminals must live in fear of their life. Not the so, law so, so, so when a thief in police are tell us to watch your back, what do you mean by that? That means they will kill me and anything. Hey, look, right now, you know, at this moment, uh, the amount of the amount of people, the amount, the amount of warning we get and even, you know, where people are say, um, you know, be careful and this and that. I have always, look, I've been always living my life 
like that, even as a police officer, where people want to kill me and them things, because I don't stand for foolishness. I am not afraid of anyone. You only can die once. That's how it is. And as I have said to you before, just give, uh, just give you a simple scenario. So only people who are close to you can kill you. you know? I can get I can get the opportunity to kill you because they know your whereabouts. Somebody who have no connection or connected to you or other, or other people, they cannot get to you, you know, that easily. Me as, as for me, I'm you know me living me living in America and everything now. Me work for Uncle Sam. So if a guy wants to send me an infirm and if a guy send me an infirm and everything, I have no problem with that. So I fall in a different category. I, mean, I am not going to protect any guy and them things. I am not going to support any guys where in America yeah, sell drugs and then yeah, use money and buy a gun to send back a Jamaica and them things. And the worst thing you was a police officer. Right now, you know, as we are talking right now and right now, you know, I don't know if you, you had seen a video where I have the three parts. And, and I want you to listen to me. When I, when I went to the academy, police academy, I was a teenager. I was I was little over 17 then. And it was 13 of us as police cadet. And, you know, over time, people grew apart, because, you know, and people migrate and all kind of things. And I was able to um, find, you know, to... You know, find some, some, you know, get to link up back with some people. One of only the only, only one person out of all thirteen of us as police cadets are still serving. Our brother was named my assistant commissioner of police. You know, he named Gary Mackenzie. So we were cadets, you know. So we were in this group. So there's one special cadet. Um, we call him Bagger. Bagadur. He's a man, you know. Most cadet did free them. I was the only one I never free them. Three of us. Um, as cadet then, you know, you'll say hardcore or anything. It was me, my next brother when he dark brown. He's a lawyer, you know, a Jamaican Bagadur. So we able to, I was able to find Bagadur. Like, he was after the radio for like about 30 something years. I don't see him or anything. But we used to, we used to, you know, um, when we were on the campus, at the police academy, you know, we were friends, you know. There are all three of us. We used to walk and thing and but I never venture outside of the academy with them. So there this guy you now, um his name is Christopher Brother J. He come from Gully, you know, a Capburn thing. Right in the community where Bitty come from, where them killed Bitty. You understand? That's a brother when him Carl, Carl Heinz. But them say boy, a rifle said man will kill him. A policeman, you know, this guy was a police officer. So you know, I was able to find, able to link up back with Bag and Dirt and Dog Brown, him, he's a liar. I didn't know what happened to him and all of we and there's one cadet out of all of us, all, all, all of the other cadets that was very close to me. A guy named Daxton. I know even his baby mother, we used to live in the same community. I would trust this guy with my life. So whilst we were in the group and, you know, you know, with Africa, we were a teenager then and, you know, over 30 years, some people, you know, get to link up and thing and, you understand? You have a guy we did in our group, and he, he, um, he was police to him named Pocky. He, get the, he pretty much deport himself in America because he, he just lied. Talk to him all the while, even and say, Boy, Bridget, just always try to do the right thing. And you understand? But some people, they don't like when you tell them the truth. The people like when you massage them, ego, you know. So we were in the group and we had a cut, we have a discuss, we have a discussion, you know, we are talk about things we are meant and we are youths, and you understand what I'm saying? And dog is dog brown, he's a liar, you know, a Jamaica, you know. He was practicing law in England. I don't care to talk about why him go back a job, why him left England as a barrister and you know transition and bec- and as a lawyer and Jamaican. Him live down the no one thing, you know. 
So during the conversation, I mean, I tell you how he going on. Um, so I was asking for this guy on him, Christopher Brother J. Ebert. Before I go any further, the only time I've ever come in contact with this man as a police officer was in 1994. In 1994, I was on special squad at Unsby with, with Cowboy. You know, we call him Clappy Knight or Clappy Cast Three Mouth, and but most people know him as Cowboy. So we were patrolling, you know, me, Cowboy, Ruben Gunter, Rock Steven, Bobby Reds, and Kirk Palmer were dead. And reaching the Chinese cemetery, there was a vehicle that was coming up Walton Park Road, and Cowboy just drive and block it. And, you know, you know, as member uh, at the team and everybody had come up full gun and you know, pine pan the vehicle and everything like that. This is Jamaica because Jamaica itself you know, is a war zone you know, when you have police at Jamaica. Whether or not you want to believe it, there's no invading army, but these young men are heavily armed. Stick up the vehicle and so now look now, the driver, he had on a white mesh marina. It was Christopher Brother J. Ebert, we were a cadet. So me, you know, because I knew him and them things. But I knew, I knew about the reason why he had to leave the police force. He did not leave on an honorable condition. He had to run away to escape being charged criminally because he and a detective corporal named Cole from Spanish Town. Them rob, them arrest some youth from out of sort of rob some people. And when them arrest the robber them, them rob the robber them and the robber them women, them went to Tony with them, screamed about it. So. And by the time Tony with them to start the investigation, them run with run with the police force. So he had left, went to Canada. And when he was in Canada, he was he were involved in a robbery and somebody died and he was in jail and for some reason them sent him then they put him at Jamaica. So crappy night now, so cowboy. So me you know said to the cowboy, I said, boy, so Mr. Knight, me know him, you know. And you know, cowboy is a man that talk loud, you know. The man in the talk, see, the man in the whisper, you know. So cowboy is talk loud, you know, and I say, oh, so I don't know this man, this man is a man that thief in police. And a thief him, thief, why him have left the police work, and cowboy, raga raga him, and he had a boy, and search him vehicle, and, and I tell myself, oh, a, this a, is this a, this a man that put on the police, a thief, all robber and all kind of thing, and that the only time I ever, ever had an encounter with the man as a police. One time we were um, in a civil right yard, me and Bobby and him thing there. I saw him and him did sit down on, you know, one of them iron pipe. Um, you know, you know, you have them iron pipe where you sit down in a in a in a view in a poor community. It's like a, it's it's like a real it's a railing, but people use it sometimes to sit down and after a while it becomes shine. So he was you know sitting there and we not you know we not look for some gunman and him, some robber and them thing there. And, you know, me tell Bobby say me know him and, and we not even searching. So far so what? So Christmas Eve now, you know. So we, we be in our group and you understand. And so dog, you know, dog bone, the brother we a lie, you know. So he wants to put himself same superior and them thing that to me. Me never I tell nobody say me superior, you know, to anybody, you know. So he must say, boy, I go I am behaving like me better than the others, other cadets. Because two men lose them work, two them some of them thief and some of them have to run through them thief and because me resign and they go all like me. You know, me superior. I mean, I say, no, I'm not superior to nobody. Or anything. You understand? So, you know, I try to pay me in a way and them thing. And, you know, me more have to put himself on a pedestal. So, boy, oh, me a lawyer and this and that. And, you know, the, in the group, you know, um, most of the people they just observe and if they say anything, they were more supporting him, you know. Yeah, to me that don't um bother me one way or the other, you know, because he was saying that me an infirm and oh me make a police killer my cousin and all them things. I mean I said, look here, you see me let me tell you this. If me have a family and I'm a bad man and I'm a kill people, but the things I go different him, you know, because when time you kill the own when you kill people. You understand? Eventually, you're going to kill even your own family. You understand? You say, if I have a gunman, I have, have no qualms or nothing for infirm. You say, I'm an infirm. I mean, police kill my cousin and 
I say, yeah, because him kill a youth where we all him grew up and him thing. Not because the other youth are gone, man. But him kill the youth, the youth give him gun and all them thing. And the man, the youth then go out. He didn't have to rob none and then go out and rob. After then come to rob, him kill the youth and take with the youth gun. You understand? You can't, you, what kind of criminal you can be? You kill your friend. You understand? You're the man go rob and then you kill him and push him out of the vehicle and, and, and you boast about it and them thing. Eh? So he knew about it and he said, boy, you know, me. If he would not do that, I think he would make the police kill him, cousin and him. He said, I'm different than him, because I'm not supporting the criminality. So, you know, I'm there and so I tell him, look here, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you how me, when it comes to morality, how me superior to you and everything. I said, remember this one with our training school, and we live at Falkland, a police academy. And Baga bring a girl, come upon the campus named Vicky. And after him finish with Vicky, remember, you know, See how you and the others they did not line, you know. If you go after the man, you know. He said, me, I me say, I was in my room. And when Uno come knock and I tell me, say, if me no want something. What me tell you, say? I said, that's, I said, battery and rape. I said, me, you know, you know them things there. I said, me grow different. I said, me have certain things about me. So all of them did line up and them go after Baga. You know, he was the one that, um, I understand when second. So I said, boy, we were youths then and this and that. And I, mean, I said, yeah, but it showed the char your character right there. Because for me, you know, I could not do that. If you know, I said, boy, a man just finished with that woman and then me. No, sir, what kind of kicks that? He said, that alone just make me want for bath. Apparently, no, by saying that, no. So I assure you, you know, I mean, I, I mean, I pretend to be better than anybody, but he might try to put me down. So I assure you, he might put me down, say, boy, I mean, I'm in pharma cars. This and that and catch me not like thief in police though. And then I say, boy, oh me make some police guy prison and all them things. And I say, yeah, if you're a thief, you know that say, if you're a thief, me not like you, me not like thief in police, you know for rap people. You understand? So apparently I'm upset, you know, about all of them things. Cause you can't see beef and them things when I'm you know, that he's saying. So I'm fixed no one thing there. So I was asking for Christopher Brother J. Ebert all along. Even to this guy when he had Doc Stan with it, me and him talk all of, but me and him talk sometimes. And me encourage this man enough. He encourage Doc Stan with it. And the man I'll even go back to school and all them things there. I'm living here before me. You know. And you understand what I'm saying? And I'm filed for him mute and all of them things there. Me know one him daughter when I bring from Jamaica. Anyway. The man now, when he's dark board now. So when me said that now, apparently, it bruised him ego now. I mean, I exposed him and I said, hey, from me young and him thinking I have certain morals about me. And the man just said, in our group, and I said, oh, vexed now, you know. So the conversation changed him and I said, boy, oh, nobody, um, nobody blood clot, I said, um, G, you know. I threw you in the team, I said, G, oh, G, you want to kill you, you know. So I said, kill me. For what? You understand? And he said, boy, G, you want to kill you because you're in farm and them things. He never expound on it and them things. You understand? But this is a man, you know. The same man, you know. Um, dark brown. He and the others, you know. They were inviting me to a reunion for all of us, you know, as cadets. And it's a good thing, you know. I'm not the kind of person who, when people just invite me, you know, I just jump on it. I said, no, you know. I want to bring my family and them things so we can, my family can meet and, you know, we can, you know, just like a school reunion. I tell him, so no, me take a pass. So right then and there, I realized that, um, you know, this thing, it was setting me up now. So I know, after him said that now and them things, so I said, oh, okay, so he want to kill me and them things. So I said, because I do not support for the man in America, I buy a gun and I send back a cockburn pen to kill him own people them. That make me an infarma. And me for dead and them thing there. He said, well, if you want to if you want to protect him because I'm a sell drugs and send back gun to uh, Jamaica, your business that but me not support no man who do them thing. There. Because guns are something that destroy people like. In a your community, you're supposed to make your community better. You're not supposed to do that because you want to can't you want to be mini government. So you want to tell people how to live their life and what they can do and what they cannot do. You understand? So you want to be a mini government that people did not elect it. And that's what Dan's have done. I've been doing for years. So yeah. you're supposed to 
as a former police officer, I want to get me that kind of mindset. Yeah, for real. You may say, so, as I then, talk about that, um, you think that when people of the public um, voice them opinion and it might include uh, the prime minister and then mm-hmm. within hours or a couple of days or so um, you see the police um, videoing individual or this individual and um, getting the individual to apologize and thing you, you, you think that is um, proper policing no man Introducing to you now a hot reggae song, No Lies, by artist Mosiah, available on all digital download platform, Apple Music, Spotify, available now, No Lies, by Mosiah, stream now. Smash that subscribe button, see you on the next video. I guess start the mindset.